rather impressed by what a 14 year old can make music wise in the 90s with very limited software or you've unsubscribed. Anyway, I made a car of Lego a while ago, link in the description. The whole idea was that two years ago I got this one and last Christmas, don't you even try when, I made the second model. Which is this Jeep, was disappointed so I tried to make a historic Formula 1 car. And in the video linked below I did my best, it was quite alright, but as you could see I got carried away. So many many hours later, I just want to go through some of the details you've seen in the video and the, the, the pictures and stuff already. So that's very important, this is the 8865. You can now make this entire thing with it, not that I'm uploading drawings or parts lists, because that seems like a lot of work, not that this wasn't any work. But that means that the previous version, I had uh, the short shaft, length two, axle and a small bevel gear that I had to obtain elsewhere. Uh, with the new gearbox layout, I could actually get rid of those. So now you can make the entire thing without any extra parts, just the 8865, if I'm not mistaken. But I don't have a lot of extra Lego, so I don't think I nicked anything elsewhere. So that's a big step up. That is really a, a second model 8865. It is much improved, much more like a Lotus 49. We at the front have a better shaped nose with more overhang closer to the real uh, thing. But this is the red I have left. So there's nothing left. I couldn't extend it further. I'm debating whether it is better to have this slanted here, but then there is a little gap or to have these removed and have it like that. You see the steps a bit, but it is better from, from a top view. So I did my best with the shaping. There is this sort of uh, stepped side here, which is sort of a curve. This is extremely 80s Lego styling. Of course, it doesn't look like a Lotus 49, but that's the cool thing. It's imagination. And I went for real features that it will come to and also for some decorative features that are still fairly cool. So a better shaped nose. And you can see in the comparison uh, that the, uh, the top view is quite the width and everything and the length is very close for Lego, 80s Lego to the real thing. So that's pretty cool. Then we get to the front, we have an empty roll bar there, which actually moves. Uh, how do, oh yeah, we get this. Performing for the camera is always difficult. Oh, there's a mirror, my mirror's gone. You see the empty roll bar. Uh, where are we? Flexus. With the suspension, sorta. It's pretty cool. Where's my mirror gone? La mirror. We still have unequal length, not parallel wishbones. So that gives us camber gain with bump and a roll center that's not on the ground, moves around a bit. So that's a lot more realistic than the Lego, which is parallel wishbones at equal length. So that's a good realistic change. We have on the side here, decorative, this thing going front, is front, front to back. That's a coolant tube. So the radiator is up front and then the coolant has to run on the side to the engine. It actually goes into the engine there. So that's decorative, but sort of nice. Um, we got a nice roll hoop here, sort of in shaped, 80s Lego shaped stiff gray roll hoop. Improved the look of the engine. So we've got more sort of trumpets now on top. A trumpets, look at a double four valve Formula One engine from 67 and later. They kind of looked like that. Lego again, Lego brain tolerance imagination. So that's pretty cool. The rear end is a lot cleaner. It's fully enclosed now. Previous car I made was higher and also not enclosed. And these are not plates, these are beams, so the, the gearbox is placed a lot lower. I changed the, the routing of from the differential. Uh, yeah, I don't understand what, what goes on here, we'll get to that later. But I managed to uh, avoid the higher shaft and now everything was a shaft lower. So we could decorate this a lot better 
Then you see the exhausts, which are quite identical to the Lotus 49. I just put this angle in and then I did the picture overlay and they were almost the same angle. Very nice. And on the other side, in the cockpit of course, we have the gear selector, one, two, three. Felt better to have the numbers in the cockpit rather than outside of the cockpit. So gear stick here, moves a shaft. Where is it? That runs down the side, appears here, and slides underneath the engine, just by the side of the suspension, and then arrives at the back here. So you see that fork there underneath the gray plate. If I operate the gear stick, it is a little tight of course. You see it move. But of course these gears, since they are in teething together when you shift, the car has to be driving in order to shift. So the positioning in the cockpit as well is very realistic, right beside the steering wheel. So that's really cool. There is more room than before for the driver. So there's actual a lot of room underneath the steering rack here for your feet. Imagining you would drive this thing. Three pedals again. Uh, the floor is a bit lower and the seat is a bit lower. I also added an extra layer here of material. So it's, it's higher and more realistic. Uh, the overall shape is, is better. This, uh, the tub, was a mixture of mainly red but also some gray and black i went all red and i yeah got almost nothing left and i like those exhausts and we got a decorative red thingy the back all the axles for the gears uh, gearbox sits there so really nice in the rear suspension i've changed the spring mounting so it has a bit more rebound travel it sits a little high and these are still parallel wishbones on the rear. I couldn't really position them properly, but unequal length. So you still get a little bit of camber gain, but it's quite minor. And the anti-roll bar is a nice feature. It's actually connected. Can you see that? There. It is connected inside there. So when the suspension moves, the anti-roll bar twists. However, since there is a gearbox in here, the shaft doesn't actually run through. It doesn't connect both ends. So it's decorative, but it's still a nice, a nice touch. He says. So, yeah, and we have our uh, caster angle as well. So when you look at it from above, you see the front wishbone is a bit further to the front, and that gives a little bit of a, a, a slight uh, angle here to the. Yeah, that gives us uh, caster, which means that if we steer very sharply, we get a bit of uh, camber gain as well. So that's a lot more realistic than the LEGO uh, default set 8865. Uh, the steering rack is a problem with the 8865. The steering rack, sort of the arms that go to the suspension, they, they move a bit. They still do here, but I added more racks with a pin there that stops it moving excessively up. So this is relatively stable and steers relatively well. Well, what else? I just added some bits and pieces here on top. There is, I think, like few fuel injectors. So I added a shaft with some gears and some other decorative bits and bobs. So this is a lot more in depth than uh, especially the routing here of all the gears, which I don't even understand anymore. But uh, it, it does work, three gears. Uh, plus it uses only the parts that come with the 8865. So what do I have left? Well, this is my red bag. Lots of grey left, only the, the long ones though, the long boys, because this is a separate construction, right? It is just a loose unit for the front, the engine and the gearbox, whereas the Lego car has great chassis from rear to front, and these are separate pieces. So we have a lot of grey left, but that's about it, because this is the blue, just two, two plates, black for small thingies. And look at how few little shafts I got, like four, 12 shafts, three pins, and one little block. 
almost nothing left so apart from the gray uh, this uses like 90 90 something percent of the 8865 so let's just look at the comparison with the real lotus 49 which is this is kind of a bit based on you see a top view sort of scale uh, the width of the cockpit and the, the, the tub is amazingly close the Wheelbase there is kind of close. Look at the exhaust. They are almost at the same position at the, at the rear. Uh, so it's really close. And we cannot really easily make the, 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 the track widths any different. But at the rear is not bad. The front is perhaps a bit on the wide side. And here the side view. Just look at the angle on the exhaust. That's an accident. I didn't imagine it would be that accurate from this drawing anyway. So it might have a bit more front overhang in the, in the real car, but I had no red pieces left and it looks pretty cool anyway. And the real engine is, sm is smaller, so it's, of course it's not the same, but you have to use your 80s Lego. It's not, it's not that beautiful, but it's actually quite beautiful brain if you have one. So I slept a couple hours only because I went to bed at like five. It was insane, but the fun I had and how engrossed you are, how, how focus you are when when doing this yeah it was great and the results is just a really nice really nice car if you ask me i'm not biased at all so there you have it i hope you found that an interesting extra deep look in the extra detailed lego model that i made thanks for watching uh, apologies if your ears are now permanently damaged from my 90s songs and uh, perhaps see you later. Bye bye.